There's been an outpouring of support from around the world for Kate Middleton, who revealed her cancer, her cancer diagnosis on Friday. Now, meantime, People Magazine is reporting that Kate and King Charles met for a private lunch a day before her announcement. It added that the two have always had a special bond, which has been strengthened due to Charles's own cancer diagnosis. But some people are wondering why Will wasn't at Kate's side during her video. And some sources say it was Kate's decision to make the announcement on her own and that this was a statement as a strong woman sharing a strong message to the world. Uh, let me ask you, Steph, because you know, you are from England, you know the Royals more than any of us do. Do you think that he should have been sitting right next to her in that video? I think it's a very personal choice, just like when anyone gets sick, how they choose to handle it, how they chose to approach and tell people, it's very, very personal. But I think with all of the, the lies, the speculation, all of the things that have been going on for poor Kate while she's been trying to come to terms with this diagnosis, I think it's very important for her to be a strong woman, to be to sit there by herself and say, you know what, I've got this, I'm in control. And she, throughout, she very cleverly has got her left hand in the forefront of the right hand, showing off her engagement ring, showing that they're united. Mm. She says that Will has been such a support to her, that he's the backbone of their family and that they wanted to take their time to explain all of this to their children in private first. So I think for her, I think Queen Elizabeth would have done the exact same thing. I think she would have been there by herself on that bench. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I totally agree in 150% her decision as to how to present this. If she wanted to present it at all, this is her business, very personal. But if she did this, uh, if she gave it the, the option for Will to be there with her. I could see that being a good thing for somebody like me or uh, any man or somebody that's partner to somebody that has cancer. Doesn't matter how you identify. That you, you would feel out of control, helpless, and just seeing how he carried himself would probably help a lot of people that are unfortunately going to be in that situation whether they know it or not. So just seeing Will there by her side presenting on a united front would have been another way to do it, but I think it would have been a distraction. I, I do think, yeah, I think people have focused on Will that have been like, oh, what's he doing? How close is he sat? Is his arm around her? Is he smiling? Right. Is right. He? I just think you it would have added my more mind. To and, also, and also, just let me finish, she also wrote that herself. She didn't have anybody else write that herself. It also shows me she's well enough to not need a caregiver. It's a symbol that she might be okay. Um, I thought it was fabulous that she did it on her own. All right. Well, great. speaking of her diagnosis, Blake Lively is apologizing after she posted a picture poking fun at the princess during all the speculation. Blake posted this heavily photoshopped image on Instagram promoting her non-alcoholic cocktail line. It was a clear dig at Kate's Mother's Day Photoshop fail. In the caption, she wrote, quote, now you know why I've been MIA. But since Kate's cancer reveal, Blake took the post down and offered this apology where she said she was mortified over the silly post. But Blake wasn't alone. Last week, Kim Kardashian posted this photo of herself with the caption, on my way to go find Kate. And John Oliver appeared on Watch What Happens Live where he joked there was a non-zero chance Kate had died. Uh, listen, Tori, you took the moment here on our show to apologize. Yeah. Do you think that they too should have apologized? Or do you think that everybody, you know, um, I, th I think they were not being malicious in any way. I think that was all joking. And I think that when someone is as big as Kate Middleton, that's totally in the pop culture and allowed to be joked about. I felt bad because I was sort of saying the British people have a right to know because they pay taxes and they support the British uh, royal subjects. And I thought, I don't know, after she said it, it just... I kind of wanted to just apologize to Kate. Like, I'm never going to meet her. I just meant not to the palace, because they bungled this from beginning to end, honestly. I wanted to take that time for anyone that's been outed medically to have the space and grace in which they want to apply it. And I didn't give her that grace. What do you think, Jeff? Do you think that Blake Lively and other celebrities should have to apologize? No, absolutely not. I don't think so. It's pop culture, right? And you're making a goof on pop totally. culture. You don't expect a person to get cancer right. or get in a car accident and be like, wow, I just made that joke. I feel bad. Of course you feel bad. But it's like that wasn't your intention. You weren't maliciously going after someone. You're making a pop culture reference. That's all. I don't, this apology, the more people apologize, the less I want to hear an apology apology because it's like cool you that said a, sorry it. 10 times and you when you apologize you really mean it and people should accept that you shouldn't apologize for every single little thing hey 20 years ago when I was in high school there was a 
no, man, it's over. Let's go. Move okay. forward. And Steph, let me just ask you, what is the feeling in England by the, the, the media response, the response in America? What do you think? I think people are obviously horrified, and I think people are horrified by their own actions, their own speculation. You, you, met, you said it so perfectly earlier, Sam, yourself, about politicians. You said, we're so quick to read a headline and then spin out rumours, lies and gossip with no evidence. We're very happy to sit publicly and like say it and gossip and talk about it. And there are real repercussions to that. And I think, I know what Tory said about the palace. I definitely think they need modernising and they definitely need to be more aware of how they put out statements and how it can come across. Absolutely. But in this case, they never lied. Right. They said she had had her abdominal surgery, right. she did need to hide the heel, and that she won't be in the public eye until Easter and to please, please give her that time. You're right. It was everyone else that speculated, and then now she's been forced, like as you say, to come forward and say what there's, is wrong. Yeah, there's You're a lot right. of mistrust though right. in the palace. True. I have but to I, say I that. do agree with that. Obviously, I think there is, there's been so much scandal, there's been yeah. so many secrets, there's been so much. But I think the main problem, more so than the palace, is the paparazzi. And, and like you said, they're very quick to put out a headline, which then gets spun right. into more and more lies. Yeah, and people believe it verbatim. Okay, can you believe it? we're going to switch gears here? It's been 40 years since Kevin Bacon's iconic prom dance in Footloose. Now the high school where the movie was filmed wants Kevin to come to their final prom. So who can forget Kevin's iconic prom dance at the end of the movie? All about a town that banned dancing. Now the high school in Utah where it all began is relocating after this year. So the students have been blasting social media with cutouts of Kevin Bacon <laughs> asking him to come to their prom. They even put on Footloose for their high school musical this year. The Today Show was live from the school and had Kevin on video from Atlanta to give his answer to the students. Here's how it all went down. I've been amazed at the work that all of you have been putting into this with the, you know, the musical and the flash mobs and the recreations and the, uh, it hasn't gone unnoticed by me. I'm going to come. I got to come. <laughs> Thank you guys, let's dance. <laughs> How cute. And you pointed out the people dressed as bacon. There's like three okay. people taking it as serious as a heart attack sitting there dressed fully as bacon. Is he gonna come? Is he gonna come? I like mean, Kevin, this I don't know. Cool. He's goals for me. I know. This guy, he is a farm. Kieran here is sexy all the time. I know. Well, what are they gonna do at the prom? He's gonna do a choreographed dance. I think they will all learn a choreographed dance and like oh. do Does he have to be it? there the whole prom or that's can he make it? Because that's, that's gonna be awkward, I, right? Look, I got a hard out. Like I'd already have somebody with an excuse. <laughs> like, I'd be like, I can't, uh, we're gonna party tonight. Oh, I just gotta go. <laughs> Jeff just texted me. My, I can't. My theory on Al hating this so much because <laughs> he's so uncomfortable is because he was a teacher and I think he's seen that many proms. <laughs> he's so over it. I taught he's middle school. It. Actually, the dance is like for the eighth graders. That was the last time you were gonna see him, so it was a little, I didn't mind chaperoning those. For me, just as a, a grown man now, a high school, I'm like, okay, we did the meet and greet, right? Right. Jeff? Okay, so now it's. 9-10. Then you better what lay out. What are we doing for the other lay two out the, Then you better lay yeah. out those rules now because then they are going to say, oh my gosh, Al Jackson showed up for five minutes. Right. You better yeah. lay it out. I'm right. coming oh. for a meet and greet. And then a I'm going to you all have fun. Right. I'm not learning a dance routine. I never said you had to. Well, you said Kevin Bacon had to. <laughs> I'm just saying it's okay. weird if he shows right. up and says hi and doesn't do a dance. Do, do a dance. dance. He, he redid it, it on Jimmy Fallon on Saturday night. He had a couple drinks. All right. We got one more story. He's going to do it. just cut me off. I was in the middle of the whole thing. I keep being told. All right, get to this dumb stuff. <laughs> Keep being told yes. to move it along. <laughs> All right, so Jenny McCarthy revealed that husband Donnie Wahlberg sends her flowers every sends her flowers every week. Jenny told People Magazine for the past 10 years of their marriage, Donnie has been sending her flowers every Monday without fail. Jenny also said Donnie still gives her butterflies and is the love of her life. But do you think this is too much, Jeff, since you, we got cut you off on the last one? Is this too I'm gonna much? I guess you do. No, yeah, this is stupid. You no, would this. never yeah, do this. Never, never. What about picked flowers? No, how about uh, buy some groceries once a week? <laughs> that, Costco? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I agree with Jeff. I'm sorry, my earring stuck to my head headpiece. Um, I have to say the flower thing and her being like, he's still going to have butterflies. I'm like, get real, Jenny McCarthy. I like it. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Get real. I think it's beautiful. I don't think this is real. Th does Mark, your husband, do anything No, like he this? does. He does not get me flowers every week, and I would love that. But my husband does really thoughtful things that don't cost money. Like every time I come out here, my car is already warmed up. So he has a timer on his phone. Every time I go out in the morning, my car is, is warmed up. So things like that where he's always thinking of me that doesn't cost any money makes my little See, heart I like flutter. That's beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, look. 
Okay. I, it's very old school to me, and I think that the, it's it's lost a little bit. Oh, you like this? I kind of do. It really reminds me. My my grandfather used to kind of, you know, he was a stylish man. He used to buy my grandmother clothes, and he would just she would just be chilling, sitting on the couch, and he would just come up and just put a purse in her lap. And it was Cute. a very like he used to go with her to like J C Penney, not wherever they shopped, and he would sit in the chair, and he she would come out my model stuff. I think Aww. there's a and Steph, there's you like love a relationship this. there. Yeah, I'm I'm a sucker for old school chivalry. Yeah. I, you know, open my car door for me, open the. I mean, what I love is like my partner knows I can do it all myself, but it's the fact that he's just thinking of me and doing yes. it for me a little bit. Like going that, like you said, with the car woman, that is so something that he would mm -hmm. do. And I, to yeah. me, that means a lot. To right, me. same. He doesn't buy me flowers every week, but you know what? He'll make me a cup of coffee every single day and bring it to me in bed. A what cuppa. a cutie. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'd rather what a cutie. Like, I'd rather have like a burrito. <laughs> okay. You would want your husband to bring you a burrito every Put day. Put it out there. I don't want flowers. Put out the burrito. Burrito. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay.